Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the first film in our new miniseries, SCOTUS in the Movies, a selection of films relating to the Supreme Court of the United States. Tonight's movie is On the Basis of Sex, made in 2018, a biographical legal courtroom drama about the early life of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, a pioneering women's rights attorney and the second female association justice of the U.S. Supreme Court directed by Mimi Letter with Felicity Jones and Army Hammer. The screenplay was written by Daniel Stiepelman, who is Justice Ginsburg, Ginsburg's nephew. Stiepelman's script made the Hollywood blacklist of unproduced scripts in 2014 because it took so long for the film to get financing. Much of the movie was shot on location in Montreal with some scenes filmed in New York, Boston, and Denver, Colorado. The film did well financially, earning $65 million on an investment of $20 million. But it received mixed reviews. Rotten Tomatoes said that the movie was nowhere near as groundbreaking as its real-life subject. But her extraordinary life makes a solid case for itself as an inspirational, well-acted biopic. A.O. Scott of the New York Times said that historical narratives like this one are best when they pique curiosity as well as satisfy it. Richard Brody, writing in The New Yorker, said the movie, written by Daniel Stiepelman, sacrifices character for intricate and often fascinating behind-the-scenes legal maneuvers and emphasizes, above all, the role of social activities. Plot summary. On the Basis of Sex is a biopic set in the mid-20th century about the early professional life of Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who became known as the Thurgood Marshall of women's rights cases. It traces her life from her Harvard Law School days to her seminal argument in the U.S. Court of Appeals case, Charles Moritz versus Commissioner of the Internal Revenue Service. Much of the film is devoted to her preparation for an argument of the case in the Court of Appeals in Denver, Colorado, in 1972. The movie gives a fine insight into the nuts and bolts of preparing a legal case which may result in changing the structure of the law and thus affect the lives of thousands of people. This case helped to propel Ginsburg along her path to the U.S. Supreme Court. It offers a lovely portrayal of Ginsburg's family life and Felicity Jones and Army Hammer give warm, poignant performances as Ruth and Martin Ginsburg. For a more extensive study of Ginsburg's life, a documentary featuring members of Ginsburg's family, many political and legal luminaries, and an interview with Ginsburg herself will air on August 28th. Fun facts about the film. Recording artist Keisha released a song intended for this film, Here Comes the Change, but sadly, didn't make the final cut. Erwin Griswold, dean of Harvard Law School, played by Sam Waterston, appears prominently in the film. In an early scene, he hosts a dinner at his home at which he asks the female students to introduce themselves and explain to the assembled guests why they are taking up a man's place at Harvard Law School. Next, he denies Ginsburg a Harvard degree when she's forced to transfer to Columbia. Later in the film, he appears as Solicitor General of the United States, orchestrating the government's defense of the tax code in the Moritz case, in direct opposition to Ginsburg. Not a pretty picture. The moot court scene is Ginsburg, in Ginsburg's home with the three mock judges, one of whom is Pauli Murray. Here we have a Durham connection Pauli Murray, Murray was a prominent Episcopal priest, civil rights activist, lawyer, and philosopher active in Durham, North Carolina at the time. Ginsburg has a cameo appearance in the film. We see her in person climbing the top step at the Supreme Court in a blue coat and dress. This shot was filmed in only three takes because the justice prohibited any more takes than that. Mimi Letter saw to it that the Felic Felicity Jones and Army Hammer met with Justice Ginsburg before filming commenced. It said that RBG was 
particularly taken with Hammer. RBG was delighted with the movie, even the sex scene. She attended the premiere with Hillary Clinton and Gloria Steinem. A few days later, she was diagnosed with cancer nodes on her lungs. In the charade scene, three movie titles are acted out. The Seven Year Itch, Seven Brides for Seven Brothers, and Monkey Business. Natalie Portman originally had been signed to play Justice Ginsburg, but had to drop out after waiting four years for production to begin. However, she did manage to stall production until a female director could be found at Ginsburg's request. During her oral argument in the Moritz case, Felicity Jones hesitates in her delivery. In real life, RBG sailed through her argument without any nervous pauses. Ginsburg actually met Mel Wolf much earlier than the film implies. They met in 1943 at a Jewish summer camp in the Adirondacks when Ruth was 12 years old and Wolf was a 16-year-old waiter. They did not meet again until 1970, when Ginsburg sought the help of the ACLU in the Moritz case. The first case in Ruth's contracts class is Hawkins versus McGee, 1943. The first case in the contracts class in the paper chase, which was made in 1953, was also set at Harvard Law School, and it was, again, Hawkins versus McGee. The closing credits include information about what happened to some of the characters. Things to look for. Justice Ginsburg cameo toward the end of the movie, climbing the steps of the courthouse in her blue dress and coat. The charade scene. The Men of Harvard song sung under the opening credits. The closing credits revealing what happened to select characters. Dean Griswold doing his discriminatory thing. The Durham connection with Polly Murray. The Thomas Hart Benton mural in the courthouse. The scene in which Ginsburg gives her oral argument in the Moritz case. And the law professor putting down his female students in the contracts class. Now it's time to watch on the basis of sex. Settle in, make yourselves comfortable, and remember, it may take a few minutes for the film to roll. Enjoy. <laughs>